Now, typical installation. We're going to talk about the installation methods for three of the technologies and the steps within those installation methods. SPR-EX. It's um, a static winding machine installed at the base of a manhole. It winds out a liner at a fixed diameter and expands it so it becomes a tight fit liner, not requiring any grout. And used typically for 6 to 42 inch circular applications. Here we see an example of an installation that's halfway through. As mentioned, 6 inch to 42 inch capabilities. It forms a liner and pushes the liner downstream at a fixed diameter and through a particular process it then severs a sacrificial lock and through this process we feed more profile in to progressively radially expand the liner to form a close contact liner with the host pipe. We will be showing a video of this a little bit later in the presentation. SPRTF, it's a traverse winding method. Once again, it's forming a tight fitting liner without grout and used typically for 40 inch to 60 inch circular applications. Now we've introduced this to the US this year. It has been in development for some time and we are looking to further develop it for other particular applications. But typically speaking, what happens is the equipment traverses the host pipe while the profile strip locks together. There's no annular space remaining between the host pipe and the liner. And therefore, because you have that continuous contact with the host pipe, you're not requiring any grout to transmit the loads to and from the liner. Now, the SPRTF profile contains three seals that are engaged during winding. There's hot melt sealants and a santacrine o-ring gasket within the lock. The third method, SPRTM, can be used in either configuration. There's a, a traversing machine, obviously used for non-circular applications, and a static winding machine that can be employed for circular applications. It does require grout to fill the annular space. Again, there is the possibility where for non-circular applications, this is a high strength structural mortar and the design is essentially as a rigid pipe. Now for circular applications, depending on the requirements of design, it can be designed as a rigid pipe employing that high strength structural grout or alternatively, it can be designed as a flexible liner in which case you employ a low strength cementitious mortar, which is a void filler essentially to fix the liner in place, to prevent any point loads acting on the liner, and also to transmit loads to and from the liner. As we've stated, typically used for applications between 36 inches and 216 inches, circular and non circular applications. We see a particular image of one. SPRTM configuration in a rectangular pipeline. As mentioned, can be installed either in a static or traversing configuration. Obviously, the static configuration must be circular. Any non-circular application does require a traversing winding machine. There is an annular space, which must be filled with the ground. We also have profiles that are able to allow this machinery and the resulting liner to negotiate particular radius bends depending on the profile that's employed, a radius of um, five times the diameter or 10 times the diameter with some profiles. Now, we are going to show a typical installation video. This will run for approximately one minute and there'll be a slight voiceover, so we'll see you after the video. There are three methods for installing spiral wound liners that vary by pipe diameter and shape. 
SBRTM is a solution for large diameters able to renew round and non-round shapes. SBRTF rehabilitates mid-range diameter pipelines. The PVC liner is wound directly against the pipe wall by a traversing machine, resulting in a tight fit. For small diameters between 6 and 42 inches, there's SBREX. PVC liner is wound by a static machine that sits at the host pipe entrance. SBREX is initially installed at a fixed diameter. Once the liner reaches the far end manhole, the expansion process begins. Wire within the liner is pulled, severing the sacrificial lock inside the profile. This process travels back towards the winding machine. This enables successive wraps of PVC profile to expand against each other, increasing the liner's diameter to fit tightly against the hose pipe. Okay, with any luck, everyone's videos have concluded. Have to sometimes allow for different uh, speeds and so on, any lag. The typical installation steps. Pre-installation, we require a pipe to be cleaned and inspected. The laterals are located and logged prior to winding. Again, it's a PVC strip that is installed through a mechanical process. There's no pressure involved, so it's not going to deform out into any voids in the pipe, including lateral openings. The insulation process, in which the strip of profile is fed from the spool above ground to the machine, either in the base of the manhole or traversing the pipeline, and so the liner is constructed on site within the pipe. Post installation. Laterals are reinstated. Now, whether that happens absolutely immediately or whether clients sometimes require a low pressure test, which can happen. Um, again, my experience is that certain clients who have had extensive experience with it, some are quite comfortable with the ceiling capacity and value reinstating of the lateral connections for their uh, residents as quickly as possible. The liner ends are cut and sealed using a variety of methods, hydrophilic foam and epoxies, mortar grouts, and so forth. 